The winner of Anthony Joshua Francis is being set up to face the winner of Tyson Fury Oleksandr Usyk, according to the chairman of General Authority for Entertainment for Saudi Arabia, Turki Al Sheikh. Turki Al Sheikh then went on to share his excitement on the AJ Francis fight, joking with the MMA man that he would like to see him stopped before he takes over boxing entirely. Al Sheikh stated, you understand now why it's Joshua against Nganu. You will see the result of this match. It will connect with the result of the 17th of February. This is our idea. All the people said to me, don't talk like this. But Nganu, I think you will understand me. I look to you as a brother, but I want someone to stop you. I think it will be a tough match. You saw the last version of Joshua. We got him back. I think it will be something huge. The result of this match will go in 2024. We will try with Eddie and Frank to deliver to the market a very big fight. However, Lennox Lewis insists AJ should not get a shot at being the heavyweight king. Instead, he thinks there would be a better case for the winner between Joseph Parker or Zile Zhang to get the chance. Lewis wrote on X, OK, Eddie Hearn, I know this is the promoter in you speaking, so I'll break it down like the boxing fan I am. If AJ beats Nganu, which he should, does that elevate him to a shot at undisputed? Beating Wallen and Nganu, there's a much better case for the winner of Parker versus Zhang, he continued. And if AJ gets through Enga Nanu and Usyk wins undisputed, is the appetite for Usyk Joshua 3 out there? If Fury becomes undisputed, the man says he's vacating all belts, but the WBC and Ringso Fury in effect becomes last undisputed until someone else can Thanos them back together. Lewis further added on X. I still want to see AJ fight Fury and Wilder. Those are big fights. But like I told Mike Tyson, if you keep fighting guys like Lou Savarese, you will never be ready for me. Hearn responded to Lewis as he insisted that the dream has always been undisputed. He wrote, break down whatever you want. His Excellency, Mohammed bin Salman, confirmed the plan. Winner of Jack Joshua Nganu Vrav, winner of Fury Usyk. The dream has always been undisputed and we are one win away from challenging it. No problem with you preferring Parker or Zhang getting a shot at undisputed over AJ. If that wasn't enough, Lewis tweeted an interview where Eddie Hearn criticized Fury for fighting Nganu instead of facing Usyk for the undisputed title. Same. The WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Tyson Fury, whose next fight, exhibition, whatever it is, is against Francis Agarno. Since he's been world champion, he's beaten Deontay Wilder, Dillian White, Derek Chisora. Do you think he's been managed right? Yes, he's made a lot of money, he's featured in WWE, but if he was with you, would you have done things differently with Tyson Fury? Yeah, he's going to want to do what he wants to do. Like, what he hasn't done, in my opinion, is create a legacy that he could have, given his ability. A lot of people think I criticise Fury a lot. I actually rate him unbelievably. And I think he would be the favourite against Alexander Usyk. But to be a great, like the reality is you just said about his heavyweight run as world champion, that's his defences. You can't start talking about him in the same breath as great undisputed champions or legends of the past without beating Usyk, without fighting AJ, without going through every top fighter of that era. So... But I get it, you know, he, he, look, he's, it's, a, it's a money game. He's making a lot of money to fight a bloke that's never boxed before. But he should be fighting Alexander Usyk for a lot more money. But he also understands how tough that fight is. He's not stupid. He knows boxing. But, you know, I feel like he could have the chance to go down as a, as a true grey. And hopefully that's, that's important to him. However, the matchroom boxing head had a sly answer ready for Lewis, pointing out how bothered Lewis was with the situation. He wrote on X, yes, Pre-Fury v Nganu. Men, you got it bad. Just be happy for these guys and enjoy your amazing achievements. Turkey Alalshik announced an agreement has been reached between world-renowned boxing promoters Frank Warren of Queensberry Promotions and Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing, which will see the promotional outfits face off in an historic five versus five fight night. Against Eddie. <laughs> Each one of them will choose five fighters and do ninth against each other. The third, the third, the third thing, I want to see Aratora and Bubble, and I want to see it in June, and I will spoke with Top Rank, inshallah, about it. All the times you want to see it. Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren have agreed to stage a show where each promoter will pick five fighters to represent their company with bragging rights going to whoever wins the most. Warren said, We've always liked the challenge and this is a mouth-watering one. I honestly think this is one of the most intriguing events you could think of in boxing. 
a proper event to find out whose stable is stronger. I'd like to thank His Excellency Turkey Alal Sheik, who is really changing the game, like we said right at the start. He's injected a new energy into the sport. This Queensberry vs. Matchroom fight night encapsulates all of the elements you want in an event as a promoter, rivalry, characters, history, and competition. It's time to settle the score. Who's getting the bragging rights? Matchroom chairman Hearn echoed his sentiment and shared his excitement for an event he expects to live long in the memory. He stated, For decades it has been the Hearns vs. the Warrens, Matchroom vs. Queensberry. It is without doubt the most storied rivalry in the sport. Now, thanks to the unrivaled vision of His Excellency Turkey Alal Sheikh, fight fans witnessed a handshake that broke the internet. And now, they will see the world's leading promoters going hammer and tong to settle a score for the ages. It's the best against the best, and this unprecedented night of boxing in Riyadh will live long in the memory. Along with the long-awaited Joshua vs. Fury clash, the showcase is also likely to feature the likes of Philip Hergovich and Daniel Dubois, as well as Dimitri Bivol vs. Artur Beterbiev. We don't want to waste time. Tyson Fury is 35 now, around 35. Yeah. Joshua around 33, I think. Ozik around 36. Wilder 38, 37. Artur now 39 mm. next week. Why are we are losing the time? The, the people need to see Joshua Fury, Fury Joshua, need to see Joshua Wilder. I, and I hope Wilder come back. Carl Frock said the between Anthony Joshua v Francis Nganu is just a cash grab. Anthony Joshua, Francis Ngannou, who would have thought? I mean, my initial thoughts are it's not a bad fight. It's, it's a fight that Anthony Joshua could potentially struggle with. We saw we saw him against Tyson Fury and Tyson Fury struggled. But was that because Ngannou was really good or was that because Fury didn't quite turn up? He wasn't at the races. I think the latter. So now this fight is going to be acceptable because Ngannou did so well against Fury. But let's be honest, this is a cash grab out in Saudi Arabia and I don't think it's good for heavyweight boxing. Eddie Hearn has responded to Carl Froch's criticism of Anthony Joshua's next contest, where the two-time heavyweight champion will face former UFC sensation Francis Ngannou. Hearn stated, previous to the Fury fight, it wasn't a fight that he, Joshua, was interested in. Obviously, we just boxed a guy in Ottawa Wallen that gave Fury a tough time. He cut him. I think he had 48 stitches. The fight should have been stopped and Otto Wallen should have won that fight. But it is what it is. AJ went out and it was a mismatch. He demolished him. And I believe that we're going to do the same here against Ngenu. That performance over Tyson Fury was the moment that made this fight credible. And I felt like he beat Tyson Fury. If he didn't, it was around either way. So you can't really say that he is not a credible opponent. I heard Carl Froch and others say that this is a cash grab. No. This is a dangerous fight. AJ has a lot to lose here. Coming off of the Wallen fight, in a wonderful position to go and fight for the IBF world title, which we hope will happen after the Francis Ngannou fight, but there is a lot of jeopardy in this fight. Frank Warren warns Anthony Joshua has hands full versus Francis Ngannou. Ngannou may improve. He gets caught on the whiskers. This fella can punch. He's tough, he's strong. He's a fighting man. He's not a YouTuber. He's not somebody who's, you know, gone to the gym and fancies his chances. He does it for a living. He's a UFC fighter. They, they, you know the MMA fighters, they, you know, inside it's their game, grappling and holding and, and all, the, all the bits they do. But he can box as well. And I think that, I think that AJ's going to, you know, he's going to have his hands full. But it's a, it's a good fight. Again, it's a good quality fight. Now, no one's saying, oh, it shouldn't be happening, are they? And why is that? Because he gave a good account of himself and showed that he could box. What I think's more intriguing is what the Garnu comes out of that fight. You know, thinking, what should I have done? Can I do better? And can he do better? Can he improve? Nganu respectfully declared that he had heard rumors of Joshua's lack of durability and plans to test it out for himself. Nganu said, of course, in a fight, you try to hit someone in the chin or wherever you can hit them. Yes, I heard that he doesn't have a chin. I don't know if it's true or not. We're going to find out. I hope that I get the opportunity to test that out. That's my wish. Anthony Joshua shakes Francis Nganu. Hand at first face off. Both show respect.
share your thoughts in the comments box below and be sure to like and subscribe for more great content.